95 won the Moose. We are Montana's music station. We're here in studio with the world famous uh, illusionist Jay Owenhouse. He's performing this Saturday at the Brick Breeden Field House. Uh, two shows on Saturday, right, Jay? Yep, four and eight. Okay, so what p- can people expect? People that have never been to a Jay Owenhouse show or experienced what you do, what can they expect at the show on Saturday? Well, we are really excited about the show this year. It's actually called Family Magic, and it's a collection of kind of my favorite things I've done in magic over the last 25 years, uh, featuring myself and my four kids that range in age from 28, 27, all the way down to 13. You don't even remember, man. <laughs> You're losing brownie points, Jay. <laughs> right. But uh, it's going to be great. I mean, you know, big illusions that you only, the greatest illusions in the world that you would only see on TV, you can see live. Uh, magic with my tigers. I'm bringing my two tigers. And then uh, we feature Houdini Escape in every show, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. And and we do that not from the sense of trying to upstage Houdini, because I don't think anybody could upstage Houdini, but it's more out of a desire to kind of recreate the experience. If someone was alive in the 1920s, they had a chance to see Houdini perform, what would it feel like? So we, we like to do that. Um, and then uh, what's fun about this show is there's a lot of uh, audience involvement. Uh, we do magic in the audience uh, and project it up on a big screen. We have people come up on stage. Uh, in fact, I'm going to saw someone in half from the audience Ooh. that has no idea what's coming. What, is that going to be at 4 and 8 p.m.? Because <laughs> yeah. I might not yeah. show up. Like, <laughs> I don't it's, want you it, to pick me out of the crowd. It's usually a girl. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, even better. I, I'm thick. It'd be hard to cut through me. Magic trick would take twice as long. Um, so what got you into magic? Like, I'm curious. Uh, I mean, I, I loved magic, watching magic, uh-huh. but I never wanted like to really try it myself. So yeah. what, what was that spark for you? You know, I think it happened when I was four. I saw a magician perform at my sister's birthday party, and it just like sparked my interest, and I got really excited. And, of course, this is before the Internet, so if you want to learn something new, you had to go to the library. <laughs> and so I begged my mom for a couple of years to take me to the library, and and she finally did, and I got some books on magic, and I didn't know how to read, so she'd read them to me and help me learn some card tricks. And and then I just started there, and then I just uh, I just I love that sense of wonder. So you know wait, I mean? essentially, your bedtime stories were magic books. <laughs> yeah, I that, guess so. That might explain yeah, something. Yeah, that might explain something. Yeah. Well, very cool. Um, so what was the first trick you ever learned, and, and who did you do that trick on? Was it your mom? You're like, hey, thanks for reading those books to me. Check this out. <laughs> The first trick that I actually ever learned, I don't even know if I've ever uh, been asked this before, but but uh, when we went to the library, um, when I was about six, the librarian there uh, was like a young guy that was putting away books in the magic section, and um, he actually did what was called the French drop, which is where you take a coin, and it looks like you're putting it in one hand, and then you make it disappear, and it actually never leaves the original hand. And I thought that was so cool, and it probably took me... A long time to find that in a book, but when I found it in a book, I learned that. And my mom, that one I learned on my own because I learned from pictures, but but uh, my mom was truly surprised because that was not one of the ones that she was reading to me. So I'm just curious because you, you say you learned all of this from books and things that you've read, but I feel like even if I read a book, like I would never be good at <laughs> magic. There's got to be more yeah. to it than just reading a book. I mean, there's sleight of hand and... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can't learn everything from a book. Um, the books were very helpful. Uh, as I got older, I, I kind of hung, hung around a magic shop um, and learned from other magicians. And then I lucked out because what I really wanted to do was to learn how to do big illusions. And I had the opportunity to become friends with Doug Henning, which you probably don't know who he is because you're too young. But I read about you, and I read about <laughs> Doug Henning. Okay. I did. He was the big magician in the 70s and 80s. I mean, he was the guy that was always on TV. He had a Broadway show. I mean, he kind of had the long kind of hippie hair and kind of, you know, never wore tux, always had, you know, just, you know, colorful clothes. And he was just amazing. And, and I had the chance to get to know him. And and uh, that's where I really learned the art of illusion. And, and it is a vanishing art, no pun intended. So you began, uh, I read that you began, you performed at a birthday party when you were 14. That was your first performance. Yeah, yep. When did you incorporate tigers into your <laughs> act? Like, what came across your mind where you're like, ah, I should bring tigers in? This is be, I mean, tigers are awesome. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Make anything better. Well, I, I, I kind of put the magic thing aside uh, and decided to go to college, got a degree in psychology, actually moved to Montana. I went to MSU here and was going to become a psychologist. 
was looking at graduate schools to get a doctorate. And then all of a sudden I just had an epiphany. I thought, you know, there's two things I really love, the art of illusion and animals. And so I decided at that point not to go to graduate school, that I was just going to pursue a career in magic. And I started small doing shopping malls on the weekends and and uh, all the kind of stuff that's not very glamorous. And, and then uh, after a few years, things started to take off. And I thought, you know, I had a chance to work with one of the renowned tiger trainers in California when I was in high school at Marine World, Africa, USA. And I thought if I could ever own a tiger someday, that would be my dream. 1995, I had the chance because the window was closing uh, as far as permits and stuff. And I was able to squeeze in there and, and, uh, and get one and, and that's how it all started. So as far as acquiring a tiger today, because that was my next question, how do you go about acquiring a tiger? And is it still possible, I mean, for aspiring yeah. illusionist magicians that maybe want to follow in your footsteps? What's funny is when I first started, uh, well, when I was in high school, I mean, there was a lot of magicians that had tigers. You had Siegfried and Roy, you had Doug Henning had a tiger in his show. Today, nobody's using tigers. I think we are the only illusion show uh, that has a tiger, tiger's. And I think that today it's almost impossible to, to, to get a license, uh, I would guess. Well, thank you very much for coming in. Cannot wait for the show. I know Absolutely. we've been uh, giving away tickets and, and VIP packages. Can you explain, too, because I didn't know exactly what the VIP package They're going to get to meet you. They're going to get uh, meet your Tigers. Mm-hmm. And uh, are, is there, is there going to be like a so special it's a pre, Yeah, trajectory? it's a pre-show event, uh, 45 minutes before the show. They get to come backstage, uh, meet me and my family, See the tigers close up. I mean, they're in uh, wheel cages because uh, the USDA requires it when they have contact with the public. They are on the endangered species list, but they get a chance to see them really close, which people just love. Uh, then we give them uh, a special gift for helping out because we get part of the proceeds from the VIP tickets uh, to tiger conservation, specifically uh, the, the Rare Species Fund and the Corbett Foundation, so that they can help preserve tigers in the wild and it's making a big difference and we're proud to be able to do that so for us well it's good i mean with the 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 success that you've seen like giving back to that you know and because tigers have probably been a big i mean your illusions a have been a big part of that success but i'm sure like I, i talked to a lady yesterday that was so excited about winning the tickets because her son loves tigers and she cannot wait you know, to bring her son uh, awesome. and see on Saturday. So oh, I really appreciate you coming in and talking to me today. You bet. And uh, really excited about the show, man. I'm, I'm going to try to check it out this weekend. And yeah. uh, 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., two shows Saturday at the Brick. Don't miss your chance to see Jay Owen House. Thank you. Thanks, Jay.